New Orleans has seen more than a share of violence uh, in, the, in uh, this town for, for years now. Just this morning, we've already reported three homicides overnight uh, here in New Orleans. We're being joined by City Council Vice President Helena Moreno to talk more about that. And we started talking about this on Friday when, those, when, when we saw uh, in, in the span of what, 24 hours, three women were killed. Uh, we talk about in less than 24 hours overnight, three people killed yeah. in New Orleans East at 630 on Sunday night, another person was killed. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it, it's getting, plus there, there, was, there, were, there were shootings in Uptown, all kinds of stuff. It, it's getting to the point where people are, are really afraid and yeah. terribly frustrated, and I know you are too. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, this is an absolute crisis. I just watched the, the story that you had on and uh, with the advocate talking about how this is a crisis and no doubt about it, it is. And that's why I've always said this needs to be treated with urgency, something that's dealt with every single day and not necessarily with, with a task force that meets every couple of weeks or something like that. Um, there's a couple of things that I think need to be done. Um, one, look, no doubt about it, we need stronger stronger gun laws in the state of Louisiana, but that's tough in the Louisiana legislature. What I do think we need is enforcement of the current gun laws that we have. Felons who should not have firearms, we need to go after those individuals in particular. But there's another piece too, and it's kind of thinking outside the box, and that has to do with uh, domestic violence. And you're probably like, Helena, why, why are you talking about domestic violence? The reason why I say that is when it comes to domestic violence, those that have aggravated charges, meaning they used a weapon, or meaning they strangled uh, their victim, they tried to strangle their victim, those are some of the most dangerous individuals that we have in the city. And there are very strong laws, some that I created, uh, where we can go after these individuals and make sure that they don't have a firearm. And you started getting, getting concerned about this when we saw those three women die within 24 hours. Uh, the, the mayor at a news conference said that, you know, uh, women may have been involved in some, some nefarious things, but, but we do not know what the circumstances were. Well, let me just say, um, you know, every person that we lose on our streets to murder, it's a tragedy. And, um, you know, no one uh, uh, deserves that type of, of situation. And, uh, and, and when it comes to women being murdered in the city of New Orleans, I'll say this, I started to see, uh, you know, a lot of news reports about what was happening. And I called Jeff Asher from AH Datalytics, who does all mm -hmm. of our, our data analysis. And I'm like, look, you know, it seems like we're having more victims. Can you run, a, a run an analysis on this? And he's like, oh my gosh, Helena, if you take a look at what's happening and you take a look at 2022 in particular, we had um, more women murdered in this city than we have in decades. The last time we had this level of, of women murdered in New Orleans was in 1996. But remember, Eric, in 1996, we had roughly 70,000 more women yeah. living now, in the are, city are, of New Orleans. Is he saying, are you saying that this, that, that, that the most cause of, of these murders seem to be domestic violence not or do we know? Not necessarily. Um, you, you usually have roughly t five to 10% that are domestic violence um, every year. So let's just say that's potentially I'm, I'm going on the low end, potentially 50 individuals over the past five years, likely to domestic violence. But what I am saying is this, that all the data will show you that those that have aggravated charges of domestic violence, those that have strangulation, those are the ones that usually end up being your mass murderers, your shooters. Take a look at all the national studies, it shows it. So what I'm saying is you wanna take the most dangerous people off the streets of, the New, of New Orleans, let's think outside the box. Let's go after individuals who we know will likely have the propensity to cause additional violence. Let me just say one more thing on this piece too. Advocates told us, domestic violence advocates told us, this was just a few months ago, that they were seeing more severe violence against women like they've never seen before. Women coming in shot, burned, like the, the worst that they've seen, women having hits on them, contract hits on them. So it's like, we should have known then that if that's the type of violence that they were seeing with domestic violence, those individuals who are creating that type of violence in their families, no doubt about it, are gonna create that type of violence in our communities. Well, and, and as you know, that's a very complicated issue because sometimes the, 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 a woman who is, who is a, a, a subject of domestic violence, you know, will let it happen time and time again, then the boyfriend or husband or whomever will, will go to jail for a couple of nights, then he's back out again. Yeah, well, and I'll tell you this, and, and once again, I'm sticking to the most severe cases, those with strangulation, those that use a weapon, those are the ones that we really have to watch but out for. But they start with the, with the 
the uh, beatings, things at like that. At times, at times. Sometimes it just escalates to it just always horrific every single time. Um, but but once you get to that point, and you're right, Eric, um, but once you get to that point where now you've been arrested for strangulation, for aggravated uh, uh, battery, using a weapon, like that's like a, about as bad as it gets. Those are the individuals we really have to go after. Some of them, some of them, even on strangulation cases, get out that same day. Get out that same day. And so, you know, th that's one piece. But once again, I mean, going after individuals who should not have firearms, legally should not have firearms because they're a felon or they have a conviction of domestic abuse battery, they're under protective order, and those are the people we need to go after. And we have said this in some of our crime forums that, that we have been dealing with this, this uh, long-term issue for, for decades, yeah. the systemic problems yeah. uh, that, that uh, lead to crime. Right now, we we're on fire, and we need some immediate attention on putting out the fire yep. as we continue to work on those long-term solutions. Yeah, and we are working on the long-term solutions. Um, we, the city council, have put the health department really in charge of the intervention programs, and we're going to spend tens of millions of dollars on the intervention piece. And there's a pilot program that we're actually about to launch that deals with identifying roughly 100 individuals who would likely be uh, a victim of a crime or a perpetrator of crime. And we wrap services around those particular individuals. And, and we've seen this type of program work in other areas. We're gonna launch a pilot to see how much more we can expand this, um, if, it, if, it's, if it works here in New Orleans. But I mean, but to that piece, you're right, Eric. It's like we're working on long-term solutions, but at the same time, we have to put out that fire. I was glad to see Chief Woodfork call in the state police to patrol our interstates. As you know, that is something that yeah. I have been calling for for quite some time. I think it's been in part of every single mayoral transition document that we needed that. And I'm so glad to see finally Chief, Chief Woodfork asking for that because when I asked the governor for it, he's like, Helena, look, you're on the city council, you're the legislative branch. I really need someone from the executive branch to make that ask. And so finally that ask was made. And so I think that that's going to be a viable solution to at least hopefully if there's a significant state police presence on our interstates to, to slow down those interstate shootings because those are in, those are those shootings in particular are getting innocent people in the crossfires. Yeah. We saw this poor woman who was driving her, her family on vacation and had you know her, her children, one of her children struck I mean, so uh, uh, that's another big, big solution. And quickly, in my we, we have a force that is depleted. You, you call with a crime, no matter what it is, it takes sometimes hours for someone to get there. That's that's just unacceptable. Yeah, no doubt. Look, the response times um, are certainly an issue, and that's why I keep pushing for increased uh, civilian uh, force so that they can handle the nonviolent situations and you have the police officers handling the most serious issues. A lot of time, issues. how is that going so far? So, look, I'll tell you this. I gotta give credit to Chief Woodfork. Uh, she and I have been working together on this. We put a task force together, and the hires for that are much improved, and we're on our, we're on our way. All right. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Thank let's, you for having me. Let's get over to Peyton.